If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer the question yourself before listening on. In order to calculate the net work that's being done on this canister by the three forces, we could turn to the work equation, which tells us that the work done on an object is equal to the net force multiplied by the displacement times the cosine of an angle. And that angle will be between the net force and the displacement. And it's important to note in this question that the angle between the net force and the displacement is actually going to be zero degrees. We don't know the direction of the net force, but let's just pretend for a moment that it was pointing in this direction. Well, if that's the direction of the net force, then of course the canister is going to move in that direction in this case. And if the canister moves in the same direction as the net force, then hopefully we can see that the angle between its displacement vector and the net force vector is indeed zero degrees. Now the cosine of zero degrees is just one, so we can actually simplify our work equation. And so we have just the work equaling the net force times the magnitude of the displacement. Now the question gives us the magnitude of the displacement as being four meters, so we already know that. Our goal becomes therefore to find the net force. When finding the net force, it's useful to arrange the forces, F3, F1, and F2, into a table showing the X and Y components. So let's take a look at that. So here we have placed the three forces along the left side of the table, and then the X and the Y components across the top of the table. We're going to begin with the force marked F3 and find its X and its Y components. So to do that, let's look at the diagram. We can see that F3 is pointing off in this direction. If we broke it into its x and y components, we would have an x component pointing to the right in this direction, and then we would have its y component pointing straight up. Now we can see that the x component is adjacent to the angle that's marked theta 3, and since it's adjacent to that angle, we're going to use the cosine to find that x component. So in essence, the x component becomes f3 multiplied by the cosine of theta 3. The y component is located opposite to the angle marked theta 3, and because it's opposite to that angle, we're going to use the sine. So we'll have f3 times the sine of theta 3. We can next move on to f1, which is basically going to have the same expressions for its x and y component, except we're going to be using a different angle. Now, if we look at the diagram, we can see that the angle to where f1 is pointing would be 180 degrees. So when it comes time to filling in the x component, we would have f1 multiplied by the cosine of 180 degrees. And then for the y component, we would have f1 multiplied by the sine of 180 degrees. Finally, we move on to f2, and we're going to have, once again, a similar expression for its components. We just have to be somewhat careful about the angle that we use. Remember, when using angles to find components, we measure them from the positive x-axis. And when we measure from the positive x-axis over to where f2 is located, we would have this angle right here. Now, the question noted that theta2 was 50 degrees. So if this angle right here is 50 degrees, that means that this angle right here has to be 40 degrees because we know that the x and the y axis form a 90 degree angle. And so 50 and 40 have to add up to 90. So if this is 40 degrees, and we know that that much right there is 180, that means that the total angle would be 180 plus the 40 degrees. In other words, that angle is 220 degrees. That's from the x axis all the way to the force marked F2. So we could fill into the components F2 times the cosine of 220 degrees, and then F2 times the sine of 220 degrees. We could go back and fill in theta 3. That was 35 degrees, so we'll fill that in for the x and y components of F3. And then we could fill in the values of F3, F1, and F2, which of course were stated in the problem. So we'll fill in all those values. What we'll do next with the table is we'll find the total x components as well as the total y components. And to do that, you're simply going to add 
the three x components and put the result right here and then you'll also add the three y components and put that result right here so let's pick up our calculators and do that and when we do that we get the following value for the x component and this value for the y component both of which are positive to determine the net force we cannot simply add these two together that's a common misconception what we actually have to do is build a right triangle showing this total x component and this total y component so let's take a look at that next so the total x component was positive 2.13 because it's positive we would point that x component to the right as opposed to the left so there's our 2.13 newtons and then the total y component was 3.16 newtons it's also positive so we have to point that along the positive y-axis so basically straight up and then once we've drawn that we connect from the tail of our first vector to the tip of our second vector and this is going to serve as the net force and to find the magnitude of that net force we can use the Pythagorean theorem because we have a right triangle so here we have the hypotenuse squared equaling the sum of the squares of the two other sides when we simplify the right hand side and then take the square root of both sides we end up with a net force of approximately 3.81 newtons now we can finally go back and calculate the work because work we had determined earlier was equal to the magnitude of the net force times the magnitude of the displacement and so we would take our net force of 3.1 or 3.81 newtons multiplied by the magnitude of the displacement which was four meters and when we compute that we get approximately 15.3 and the unit could be Newton times a meter, that's acceptable, or you could say joules as well. And so there is the final answer. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon and subscribe. You can send in your own question to this email address, and I will do my best to post an answer to it on YouTube.